as a pastor for 20 plus years and now as a professor here at Southern Nazarene University for 20 plus years. I have watched many, many people uh, struggle with the feelings of shame that we are never quite good enough. It's not that we're bad people. We're just not good enough. And our greatest fear is that no matter how hard we try, we never will be good enough. So let's talk about where, th where this shame comes from. And there are, are a number of different sources for that. I'm only going to take time to talk about five of them today. Number one are the advertisements and expectations of our secular culture. The advertisements and the expectations of our cultural society. If we ever want to have any hope of achieving any amount of success, we've got to drive the right car. We've got to have the latest version of the iPhone. We've got to have the right uh, skin tone and the right body shape. We've got to wear the right clothes. And we've even got to get the right food for our dog. And shame on you if you don't keep up with all of these status symbols. Yee. Number two is what I call uh, opportunistic bullies and abusers. I had a neighborhood friend who bullied me and terrorized me on a regular basis. And I've heard more stories than I care to hear about my friends, congregants, who have been abused by both friends and strangers, family members and spouses. An abuse that produces a lifetime of shame and disgrace. Number three, our, our unaccepting and unaffirming parents. Now, most of us grew up with well-intentioned parents, but man, they just kept pushing and nagging and, and digging at us, and you got to do... It, it got to the point where we just, we, we just finally decided, it doesn't matter how good I get at this, it's never going to be good enough. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. <laughs> so now we are. <laughs> hmm, that doesn't feel good either. The fourth source of our shame, which especially irritates me, is graceless religion. Religion without any grace. I grew up in a very fundamentalist church that emphasized the shoulds and the oughts and the judgment and the condemnation. And so I have spent my whole life and ministry trying to build a church and now a university that is focused on grace and peace. Too often I think uh, Hurting people limp out of a world, out of a, out of a shame-filled world and walk into a church hoping to get to receive uh, acceptance and forgiveness and all they get is judgment and condemnation. And that is so very, very wrong. Uh, the fifth is sort of an, um, a compilation of these four plus a little bit. Not only when you, when you have all of these advertisements and expectations from the cultural society, uh, the bullies and the abusers, the unaccepting parents, and the graceless religion, you put all of that together, <laughs> and then the fifth source of shame is from what we have from the inside out. We create our own shame from the inside. We take all of these other outside external uh, forces and we are able to create our own shameful messages from the inside out. We, we are able to take a, a really nice, wonderful compliment and twist it into something ugly and shameful and disgraceful. So, what do we do with all of this shame? Well... From my worldview and my understanding of the Bible, we bring all of this to God. 
Now, as soon as I offer that as an answer to our problem, for some of you, that is exactly your problem. You, you're, you're telling me that I'm supposed to collect all of my shamefulness and bring it into the presence of a holy God? No, thank you. Because all he's going to do is yell at me and scream at me and lecture me and then send me to hell. Well, my, one of my greatest hopes for this series of messages on shame is to introduce you to a different understanding of God. A God that no matter how damaged you feel, God still values you. No matter how unlovable you feel, God loves you. And no matter how long ago you gave up any hope of ever finding recovery from shame, God wants to say to you this morning, I still want to help. I want you to hear again the words of Jesus. Matthew chapter 11. Are you tired? Are you weary? Are you lonely? Are you burnt out on a graceless religion? Come to me. Learn from me my unforced rhythms of grace. Spend time with me and let me give you peace. Can, can I say those last words again? Words of Jesus, Matthew chapter 11. Are you tired? Are you lonely? Are you burnt out on this graceless religion that you grew up on? Come to me. Learn my unforced rhythms of grace. And let me give you peace. Thank you for spending time with me today. You are in my prayers. Hope to see you again next week. God bless.